Let's take a look at arc length and angular speed. Suppose we have a circle and the radius of the circle is r units. If we draw an angle from the center of the circle, call it theta, we'd like to understand the relationship between theta and r and the arc length of the circle that's subtended by that angle. So theta is our angle, and we're going to measure it in radians. We'll use the letter S to represent the arc length. And a phrase for this, we can say, this is the arc subtended by theta. So in that situation, with a radius of R units, the angle theta is equal to the ratio of the arc length divided by r. In a unit circle, when r equals 1, theta is simply just equal to the arc length, because if the radius equals 1, theta equals s. So in the unit circle, the actual angle measure is, is directly related to the arc length. For other circles, if the radius is anything other than 1, the arc length is going to be longer, but it's going to be exactly longer based on the size of the radius. So we can actually take this formula and we can think of it in this form, or if we multiply both sides by r, we could also consider this relationship to, to say that the arc length is going to equal theta times r. Let's take a look at some examples showing how we can use this formula. Suppose we have a circle with a radius of 4 meters and there's an angle, a central angle, that subtends a arc of 9 meters. The measure of the angle given in radians is going to be 9, the value of the arc length, over 4 the value of the radius. The 9 and the 4 both have units attached. They're both in meters, but because it's a ratio, those meters cancel out. And so the value of theta actually is, well, it's in radians, but it's kind of a unitless number, 9 fourths, or as a decimal, 2.25. We could say that that's 9 fourths or 2.25 radians, or, or rad, but in a way, we don't have to because radians, just by themselves, radians are not really a unit. So it's a unitless measure of angle size. Let's take a look at a more applied example. Suppose the pendulum of a grandfather clock is 28 inches long and swings through an angle of 15 degrees. We want to know how long is the arc that the pendulum bob swings through. So the pendulum bob is this part of the pendulum. Let's label the clock here with what we know. We know that the length of the pendulum is 28 inches. We know that it swings through an angle of 50 degrees, meaning that it's going to swing to the other side. It's going to swing back and forth. And the angle in between this angle in between those two is 15 degrees. So we'd like to know the length we'd like to know the length of the arc down here. How what is the actual distance measurement in inches uh, of the pendulum, pendulum swinging back and forth, of, of the pendulum bob? So let's try to use our formula, theta equals s divided by r. But something that's important to, to realize is that the value of theta must be in radians, because it's the radian measure that corresponds to a ratio of the radius to the corresponding arc length. 
So, okay, so we have 15 degrees, and that's a bit of a problem, because we want to turn that into, in order to use this formula, we need that to be in terms of radians. So let's convert that. I guess first off, let's try to convert that 15 to radians. 15 degrees, well, I want to multiply that by our formula. So we're going to use the formula that 180 degrees is equal to pi. And so if I want to cancel out those degrees, I want to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. That turns into, so that turns into 15 pi over 180, but 15 goes into 180 exactly 12 times. 180 is 12 times 15. So this is the same as pi over 12. So the radian value that we can use in the formula is going to be pi over 12. So we have that. And if you think about the other part of the formula, what are we given? We're given a value of 28 inches. Does that correspond to S or to R? It corresponds to R. It's a radius value. If you think about this pendulum, it, it doesn't do this, but the pendulum it, you know, it could theoretically swing in a circle. And so that 28 represents a radius value. So the unknown thing, we don't know the arc, we don't know the s value, but we do know that the radius should be 28. And so we can solve this equation. If I, if I multiply 28 to the other side, I get that s equals 28 pi over 12. And we can simplify because 28 and 12 are both divisible by 4 that's the same as s is equal to 7 pi over 3. Of course with a calculator we can get a number value for this. Entering 7 pi into your calculator means that the value for s is going to be approximately 7.33 and because the radius value is in inches this is also going to be in inches. It has to have that same measurement because we know that radians don't really have any units attached, so the unit of the value for s needs to match the unit of the value for r. So writing our solution out in words, we could say that the pendulum bob swings through an arc of 7.33 inches. We'll take a look at angular speed in a separate video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.